Hello, I'm here with a, another video for a wrap-up review of some of the games I played for the month of January 2022. So most of them I played on stream, but there were a few, well, there really only one that I didn't play on stream, and we'll get to that one when I get there. Um, so first up, we have a game called Cluster Truck. Many people have heard of Cluster Truck. It is a really um, kind of streamer popular game. It's wild, it's frantic, it's chaotic. Uh, you have to jump from one truck to another without touching the ground. The game gives you the ability to double jump. It gives you the ability to use a zip line. It gives you the ability to time slow. But if you're able to do these things without those abilities, you'll also get an achievement for beating all the levels without using any abilities. It can be very challenging, but it's also very forgiving. The levels are short, and it's a pretty fun time. There's a lot of mechanics introduced throughout all the levels. Like, there's, like, a few different worlds, like, six or seven different worlds that you have to play on. There's bonus levels from, like, Christmas levels and Halloween levels. It's just a fun time. I'm glad I got to play this one. Um, I'd heard of it before in the past, but I never really sat down and gave it a, a try. So, typically, Cluster Truck is $15.00. Uh, I got it probably at the sell price at some point for $374 at its lowest sell price or through a hundred bundle. And if you can get it at that price, it's definitely worth it. I got about four and a half, five hours out of it playing it for my first time and getting some achievements and stuff like that. I'm still yet to be able to go through and do the uh, without abilities complete, but I'll see maybe one day if I pick it back up and try that. So next up we have a game called Kerwalt Traces of Lost Colony. So this is a point and click adventure game and I occasionally get in the mood to play those. Pretty good. Um, we'll just pull up the trailer here. You got, um, you're an adventurer trying to find a, la a lost colony and it does pretty well for a point and click. It's got a lot of uh, kind of secret of monkey island vibe to it. Um, kind of old school point and clicks. It's got humor in it, so it really made me think of those types of games. Um, like Day of a Tentacle, Secret of Monkey Island, um, even back to like Grim Pendingo and stuff like that, but not as advanced in graphics. Um, it was enjoyable. I liked it. I played it once through, and then I think I ended up going back through again for an achievement I missed, so it took a little bit longer. But I got about three, four hours out of it all together. And, um, yeah, it was an enjoyable time. You can normally pick this one up at $13. It's fairly new. It just came out in January, so on January 6th. And, um, you can pick it up for about $12 as lowest well supported sale price, which is probably the release price. I'm pretty sure I also did a first look video of this game, so you can see a little bit of the footage on that video if you check my channel. Alright, so next up is a game called Mon Cage. Um, this one I'm actually, I beat, but I still have things I can do in it for a second play. That kind of stuff, because there is some changes that happen from the second playthrough. And there's like a true ending and all this kind of stuff to it. But this is a puzzle game a lot, that ha deals a lot with perspective. And kind of manipulating perspective to make things happen in the world. So, it kind of makes me think of, um, it's not Manifold Garden, but there's another one, uh, I can't even think of the name, uh, Superliminal, which I haven't played that one yet either, that one's on my, my playlist eventually, but, um, this game is fun, it can be a little bit frustrating at times, but there are, there's a hint system, and the hint system does a really great job, because it gives you hints in, like, tidbits and eventually it just gives you a video if you're really lost so if you're really lost and you need help it can just show you a video so you can get this game for $12 and the lowest recorded sale price is $12 you might be able to find it a little bit cheaper online on different markets um so because if that $12 isn't to your liking for a three hour experience then you might want to hold off or find it online somewhere else but I like it it's a really cool puzzle game and um it, it did get me stumped a nice amount, but it, it does a lot of fun things in it. Next up is Project Warlock. So this one is a kind of Doom shooter. 
or like very um very inspired by doom and i never really liked doom growing up because i just wasn't that good at it and so i never really got into those style of games and i know there's a lot of them out there that do that really well um such as project warlock and um dusk and a few others but um i just never really got into them and this one honestly might be one of the ones that kind of makes me want to play some more of those at some point just because it was a lot of fun there's a lot of diverse weapons in this one there's bosses there's different abilities you can get you can either use like your bullets and abilities or you can use magic abilities and you pretty much are um tested to pick up all the resources you can throughout the game because on Beezy's difficulty it is pretty forgiving there's a um like infinite lives on the easiest difficulty but if you play it on normal you can run out of lives and which will cause the game to start over but you know if you search for all the secrets you can find then you're probably going to be all right but yeah this one was a lot of fun and i'm looking forward to project warlock 2 which is probably going to be coming out sometime this year um just because i played this but again like i never really played doom and hexen and classic wolfenstein like it's mentioning this is kind of inspired by but i still really enjoyed this you this game is typically twelve dollars but you can get it for next to nothing at three dollars during sales so it's definitely worth that i got around eight hours out of it nine hours out of it so you can pretty well get in there for that price and get a good solid amount of content if you like shooter games there's secrets fine weapons all the good stuff that you know these kind of doom shooters are known for okay so this next one i'm not gonna click on the video just because i don't want to flash up some of the content that shows up in the video um this is a kind of more adult only game but there is censorship if you would like it this is just a very strange game that i end up playing on my off time uh outside of stream just because it was something that had been on my watch list for a while and i wanted to try it out um this game is called rabbit burn and the the way i can describe this is it's just the weirdest game of pool i've ever played so basically you are a rabbit and the idea is there are bunnies and you want to mate with the bunnies and in order to do that you have to play pool by knocking out the other contenders who are trying to mate with your bunnies it's just weird and it's crazy if you don't mind adult content games and you're you don't mind games that are out there that are strange at least give this one a look um it's normally 15 dollars i picked it up for the six dollars on sale and got about two and a half hours out of it so i still enjoyed it it's again this is one of the weirdest games i played recently especially this year so um check it out if you don't mind that kind of content next up is a metroidvania game called deedlet in wonder labyrinth um or record of lotus war deedlet in wonder labyrinth I know the Record of Lotus War is a big anime slash manga series from back in the day. I vaguely remember watching some of the anime, but that's about all I knew about this. That does take away from some of the storyline aspect of this game. You're not going to get into the storyline as much if you're not into the anime storyline and the events of the anime or the events of the manga. But I still enjoyed my time with this. It can get a bit tedious with the way the game works um so you have two characters basically in a way that you switch between you have a fire form and a water form and you avoid bullets by switching those forms and um i might as well throw on the video here while i'm talking but um if you switch your form then like bullets are flying towards you that are red will go right through you so, vice versa on the blue so you have bosses that you have to maneuver and like be aware of which form you're switching luckily they don't have some weird annoying noise every time you switch the character that would make this almost unbearable and unworth to play but 
I think this is a worthwhile contender in the Metroidvania games. If you know you played Castlevania Symphony of the Night a bajillion times, and you played Bloodstained a million times, and you're just wanting to find something else to kind of scratch the Metroidvania itch. Um, typically, this is twenty dollars. Lowest recorded price is ten thirty nine. This was an early access and did come out of early access fairly recently, which is well probably why it popped up to this twenty dollars sale. Um, my hours might not be entirely reflective either because of that. So when this game came out, I put a couple hours into it, I think three or four hours into it to begin with. And then I waited for more content to come out. So then I restarted once all the content came out completely. But all in all, I put 12 hours into this game. So you can get a nice amount of time out of this, but you know, it's kind of in the middle when it comes to the worth of the metroidvania it's not bad it's not great it's just it's okay so next up is another point and click i was gifted this one during the uh winter sale and this was a game i really wanted to uh try out because of the art style it has a very hr geiger art style I'm pretty sure I even talked about this one during my Winter Cell video as a game I was probably going to try to pick up depending on the price. And someone else uh, pulled the trigger on that one for me and picked it up for me. So thank you very much for that. And as you watch me play some of it, it was a really cool time. I liked the art style a lot. There was a lot of cool stuff to gawk at. Um, very dark art style. The ending is kind of really my only gripe with this game, but... Um, the rest of it is still a lot of fun. It does a good job of letting you know where you need to go, that kind of stuff. Um, the puzzles are fun. They're, most of them are kind of typical puzzles, and none of them got really, really annoying, if I remember correctly. I like that this game has choices you can make, which do affect the storyline in some ways. It affects the characters you interact with later in the game. It affects things like that. So, that was pretty cool. So, you do have kind of like... The ability to go through this game twice so the first time you go through this game probably take you about two or three hours after that you could probably go through and succinctly beat it again within like an hour or so just because you know exactly where you're going and you know exactly what you need to do um because like i said there are different achievements that you can get and in order to do that you will have to go through and play the game again on um making those in to make those different decisions you, normally this game is $12, you can get it at its lowest price during most sales, around $3. Next one's a bit of a silly one, but it was a request that someone told me I should try to play on st stream, and I did. I messed around with it for about an hour on stream, um, and it's it's weird, but it's actually kind of fun. I um, There were some really annoying ones to try to get the um, achievements on, but you know... I'm just, that's, that comes down to my completion, it's not the, um, the game. For what this is, this is actually a really neat little game. It's basically kind of a sports mini game set using these really weirdly shaped animals. Um, they're doing things that you wouldn't, like this one right here, I did not like that one. That one took me so long to do. The diving game, but, um, because you have to get like a really perfect score on it. <laughs> but anyways, um... It's just, I don't know, it's, it's weird, but it's fun. I, I had an enjoyable time with this one, even if I only did put like two hours into it for a $5 game. Because um, I did buy this at full price, it wasn't on sale at the time I bought this. Um, you can get it for three thirty four during sales, but you know, I don't know. For the laugh I had between friends and... Just the silliness that this game is, it's it's worth picking up if you you don't mind a game not being grade A material. Um, there's obviously some things to take here, like this is obviously just, you know, Ski from the old PC game or Alpine Sled or whatever game you want to call it from back in the day with the Yeti. But, you know, it's still silly to see these animals kind of running around in this game doing these things. And last but not least, the last game I completed in January was another gift from a friend who wanted to see me go through this one because I had never played Zool originally when it was on the original consoles back in the day. Um, 
Mrs. Zool read the mentioned, and um, it is normally ten dollars. You can get down lowest sell price at five dollars, and this is actually a lot of fun. Like the the Zool game itself is a lot of fun, but like the the remaster, redimension, whatever you want to call this, they did a really good job because not only does this cater to gamers who want to see the original Zool, you can play that because it's on there. It caters to someone who wants to play the original Zool, but maybe look just a fresh skin so it does give the ability to play it like this and then you even have a um uh, an easier mode with the new skin to where it's zoomed out a little bit and you get double jump and it makes it to where if you're not good at retro platformers and you're not going to be able to beat the game on normal then you can go through an easier mode and if you still want to experience this and none of those modes sound easy enough for you they even include cheats in the game which give you things like infinite jump and um invincibility and stuff like that but this was a really fun game i sat down in one session and played this i think in about three hours and then i went back through and did all the other achievements that were required so despite like me never playing zool this was a fantastic experience and i really liked having this uh remaster available especially on steam so that was pretty much it for the games i played um i did also recently clear two games but those will be in the february clears since they were in cleared in february and yeah i'm looking forward to just keep on kind of hacking away the backlog i'm getting a lot more games done now on my backlog through twitch streaming um than I would be normally, so that's fun. And I keep telling myself I'm gonna try to get back to reviews, I'm gonna try to get back to regular scheduled videos, but we'll see how that goes. It, bad thing is, it's just more convenient for me to do them on Twitch as a, hey, let's hang out, talk while I play a game. Um, but thank you for dropping by, I will catch you next time.